Dublin South FM. Hello and welcome to Meet the Candidate, our series of interviews with hopefuls for the upcoming local elections. In the studio today is Josepha Madigan, the Fine Gael candidate for the Stillorgan Ward. Firstly, tell me about Josepha Madigan, the person, the mother, the professional, the political hopeful. <laughs> uh, trying to say that very succinctly is going to be difficult, Bob. Um, well, I suppose I'm, I originally am from Fox Rock, where I grew up. I'm one of six children. Uh, my parents still live in Fox Rock. I live in Mount Marion for the last about 12 years. Um, I was educated in Mount Anvil School and I went to Trinity College where I studied languages before I went on to study law. I've been a practicing solicitor now for the last 17 years. Two children, uh, 10 year old and 8 year old boys and a husband and a dog. Um, been very involved in my community where I live for the last number of years in McMarion Parish, um, in McMarion Residents Association and I'm on the Parents Association for the local school as well. So. I've always been very interested in um, what's going on in my area, I suppose. And uh, one of the reasons I decided to get involved in politics is that um, I think the skills that I have as a lawyer and indeed as a mediator will be very useful um, in terms of politics and political life. Tell me about your canvassing routine. The rain, unfortunately, has dampened our spirits a bit over the last number of weeks and it's really been very difficult to be patient about that. Uh, for example, we tried to get out, the, was it last night? Uh, yeah, last night actually, and we couldn't because, you know, I have no difficulty going out with an umbrella, but it's really not fair to ask people to come out in that kind of weather. And not alone that, people don't want to be answering the doors, you know. So when the weather allows, we try to get out almost every other day at the moment. Um, I mean as a first time candidate you're trying to build up political recognition and even though I've grown up in this area it's still nice to meet people and you know so that they can put a face on a name. Your dad was uh, free and a foil then yes. he was independent and then independent again and you are Fine Gael. I am. Why Fine Gael? Yeah and I, I, I get asked that frequently as you can imagine. Um, just to go back to my dad he, w he was a councillor for 14 years in Dunleary Rattown County Council which is the council that I hope to be elected to and he topped the poll twice actually as a Fianna Fáil candidate and then he resigned from Fianna Fáil for many different reasons, uh, policy issues, uh, maybe some of the practices uh, that were involved. I, my real memory of my dad is as an independent rather than as a Fianna Fáil uh, politician and Fianna Gael I'm very attracted by the policies of Fine Gael, by the people, by their ethics, their principles, and all of those reasons, and it's a very good fit for me. I felt that the other parties, their policies were incongruent with who I am, and I had to be part of a party that I believed in. So in 2011, when the general election was coming around, I decided that well, my children are a bit older and that I could afford the time to go out and canvass, so I canvassed to, to, to get Fine Gael into, into government and I think we're doing a, a very good job under the circumstances, which is a very difficult mantle to take over. I just felt that I couldn't sit on the sidelines anymore and decided to step forward. So what, uh, what issues are you hearing mostly about on, on the doorsteps? Crime is a big one. Um, there seems to be, uh, uh, you know, n not to, to frighten listeners, but there does seem to be a, an increase in crime across the constituency and particularly across the Stillorgan Ward where I'm standing. And I don't know why that is, but uh, it seems to be sort of very insidiously done that, you, you know, they're coming in, in the back garden and, and in the front and there's no cars and that kind of thing. So neighbourhood watch schemes is something that... Um, I would be a, a strong proponent of and working with the guards and, and trying to increase awareness of that and looking after our, our neighbours and, and the community in general. Um, there are lots of local issues, you know, potholes and hedges and overgrown trees and all those things with and signs. Dog fouling is a big issue as well. Um, there's lots of uh, issues over Glenalbin Pool. There's the, the traveller accommodation programme. There um, are... Uh, so many, a variety of issues. Um, so really what I'm trying to do as I go around canvassing is listen to what people's concerns are and do my best to try and do what I can for them. But obviously my hands are somewhat tied until I'm actually elected before I can actually properly uh, and robustly you know, help them. What, which of those issues would be closest to your heart? Uh, pro probably the crime, really, and, 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 and children as well and youth issues and, and you know, making sure that there's proper sports facilities there, library facilities. Um, the, my biggest thing across all of the issues is about responsible local government and really making sure that the council uses the money that it has and the resources that it has 
to benefit all of the community. That's very important to me, that we don't waste money unnecessarily and that there's a proper spend. So from my perspective, and look, this is only me obviously looking from the outside in, it's to do you know, a proper cost analysis in relation to all aspects um, and, and on all issues in front of us and make sure that we, we look at those before we make any decisions in relation to the spend of money. Property tax is obviously a big issue as well, particularly in the Dublin, uh, the Dublin Leary Rat Down constituency and you know, we have discretion there to reduce that by you know, 15%. So that's something that I'd be strongly advocating that we do um, if we can. What about uh, the, the, the difference between the percentage of the property tax that's coming to Dublin householders and rural householders? Yeah. And we, we seem to have gotten a bad deal. We, we do, and it, it is difficult um, because of the... I suppose that the, 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 the that our house prices in this constituency are higher than, than down in rural areas and that's why I think um, Phil Hogan in his local government reform has allowed us this discretion and I think it's up to 30% in some quarters. So there is a lot of revenue coming into Dunleary Wet Down so that's the flip side of that. So we will have a discretion to reduce it. So that should bring it down. And what would you spend, uh, what would you spend the money on? What was the first... What if you had uh, mm. discretion, what's the first thing you'd spend money on in, in your ward? If I had a magic wand. If you had a magic wand. Um, I think the first thing that I would do is that I would look at a lot of the vacant properties um, in our area. There's, there's, if, if you look around even driving along, you can see a lot of you know even retail units and residential units that aren't being used and left vacant. So I would look at those and see what, what can we do with those properties and um, investigate that further and see if we can, because it, 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 there's such an eyesore and they're not creating any employment. I would look to create employment at, uh, for jobs for people as well and try and um, try and use our monies for, for the youth, for protecting the elderly. Um, th there's just so many issues, Bob. We could be here all day in relation to it. What are your views on, on social housing? Social housing, um, I have no difficulty with social housing. I think that every constituency has a responsibility to house everybody, and no matter what background they have. And, and again, that, that's something that I, I would feel very strongly about. But again, it goes back to the cost analysis and the financial aspect of that. And again, it's about value for money so, and taxpayers' money, because at the end of the day, it's the taxpayer that pays for that. But um, no, certainly, I think we, we do have a duty to house everybody. You've written law books, you've written uh, fiction. You're uh, a full-time yeah. solicitor. You've got children. How do you juggle your professional life, your home life, and hopefully your political life? Mm. How are you going to juggle all that? I must be a bit of a, bit of a masochist, Bob. I think all the things I want to take to do. I've always been civically minded, even since I was in school, you know, and... and um, I, I don't know. I, I just have a real belief that, you know, you have to give back in life and you have to help those who are less fortunate than yourself. And that's something that's very important to me. I juggle it, I suppose. I have a very uh, low social life at the moment. My social life is involved with my children and um, I enjoy my work. As I said, I've run my own practice for the last 17 years. And so I'm used to kind of problem solving for people and I just think that I've been given so much in this life and, and I have so much experience that I want to try and help people that, that can't help themselves so that's it's important to me. And what support do you have in, 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 your, in your campaigning? I have a very patient husband and two great boys who help me. Uh, I have a great campaign manager, Richard Burke, who's great, and I have a great team. So um, I think, you know, I, I don't like using the female card, but I am the only female running in, in this um, in, in this Delorgan ward and the main parties. There is a Green and there is um, an Independent. But, you know, and I know women stand on their own credentials and you shouldn't vote for a woman just because she is a woman. But having said that, I do think that in relation to getting issues sorted, uh, women can bring an awful lot to the table. And um, so, so that, that's important that I felt that, we, you know, that I step up to that mark also. Do you think that there's a scramble on at the moment between all the parties to get the gender balance? There is. Well, there's a gender quota there, you know, and um, it, it, certainly in the general election, it's going to be up to 30% and, and political parties are going to be penalised if they don't do that. But y y I have that, you know, I agree with the gender quota, but I have a concern as well that sometimes you can have the token woman there um, just to fill up a ticket. So we have to be very careful that, that, that and again, that comes from a societal issue that, that we encourage as a society women to, um, to engage in political life and not to be afraid of that. And 
and to support them in it because it's not an easy decision and I think it's an even more difficult decision for a woman to do it um, for fear of you know being judged or lo losing her family life um, and men are, are just as good obviously as at parenting and um, and looking after the house so um, so I think we really need to support women when you say men are just as good, is that from experience? <laughs> it is totally from experience. I mean, I went back to work after a few weeks with both my boys um, because I was self-employed, I suppose, and uh, my husband would be, uh, he's probably better in some ways, you know, so I would be very, very um, strong in advocating that, that men and women can, can be very equal in all senses of the word. What about the directly elected Lord Mayor for Dublin. Are you in favour? I am in favour of that. I think it's a very good idea. It was interesting to hear the vote last night that there's no plebiscite in relation to that. So it'll be interesting to see what the other councils do. You know, I think that they probably will. Um, my only caveat would be what powers the Lord Mayor, I agree with him being directly elected, but what powers he'll actually have when he is elected. Um, and will that uh, undermine local government in general or, or, or national government? So I'd like to see what his actual powers are. But overall, yes, I do agree with it. Yeah, I mean, it has been said that uh, the, uh, an elected Lord Mayor is just another level of bureaucracy. Would you agree well, with that? Well, again, this is something that I'd like to, I'd like to see uh, what powers that he actually would have. So um, I think it's important. I mean, you look at New York or anywhere else like that. I think it's important that, you know, that the people get a say in their, in their mayor and he's almost like a figurehead. So will it be a figurehead in like sort of the president of Ireland or will it be more um, a role that he will have in making decisions on the ground? So it'd be interesting to see. Have you been hearing, uh, we've been hearing for years uh, that the powers of councils have been stripped away. Um, can somebody make a difference in, in the council? I absolutely think somebody can make a difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I think when anybody, is, if there is some, an issue that is of concern to you and that you're passionate about, if you gain cross-party support, just because somebody is of another party doesn't mean that you can't work with them. And I think the skills that I have as a negotiator and uh, a mediator and persuasive qualities that I have, I hope that I'll be able to um, use my in integrity and, and my passion about issues to do that on the council. And I think that each politician can only do that themselves and sort of realise wh wh why they're doing this, you know, which is for the benefit of the all at the end of the day, you know. Have you planned ahead, if, if you're elected, how, how will you cope with your, your full-time law practice mm. and being a counsellor? and your home life? There are, I'm a very busy person, Bob, mm. and there's a lot of committees that I've been on over the years. You know, I was counsellor at the Mediators Institute of Ireland. I am on the Law Society of Family Law Committee. I was on the Dublin Sisters Bar Association Committee. I will come off a lot of those committees um, if I'm, as I said, lucky enough to be elected on May the 23rd. And, um, you know, it, it's like that, that idiom or maxim gives a busy person something to do and they'll do it. I'm a very organised person and, and I get things done. I don't believe in waffle or just um, saying things for the sake of it. So I don't think it's, I don't envisage any difficulty with that for me. And uh, how would you categorise the job of local government? Local government is, to me, about representing local issues. It's, it's not a national election. This is literally about local issues. And I think that anybody who wants to become a councillor, I always think it should be a prerequisite that they have already undertaken some community work so that they know on the ground what the people want, what they're looking for. So it, it might seem a small thing to somebody that, uh, you know, a lady is looking for a grant for the window frames, uh, you know, in, in her house. But that's of huge significance to her. So all these issues, you need somebody that will talk to a good mind and I think that I can relate to people and I think that I can gain support on issues if I put my mind to it. So that's why you should vote for me. Joseva Madigan, thank you very much. Thank you.